Moon Rivers. I am the facilitator for your training today. Again, this is Mr. David Young. This is our TI representative who have been really just helping us with this inside training. So we appreciate him. We actually want to give him a hand. He's really good. And he's been putting up with me, sending him all these emails. Okay. Uh, today is our follow-up training, like Joan stated, uh, for our INSPIRE. Of course, we're going to engage in activities that relate to our four, six weeks theme of WAVE. Okay? Um, as uh, Mr. Young, of course, stated, there are a lot of activities on the TI website that correspond with what we're doing every six weeks. Okay? Only thing we have to learn how to do is download them and use them. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to learn how to download. He's also going to show you how to um, transfer the documents from one Inspire to the next using the Connect to Class. And we're going to learn how to use those activities. Not only are we going to learn how to use them, but we're going to actually engage in the activities as students. And so we can anticipate what the students will, you know, problems they will run into. Okay? So in your folder, let's take a look at our folder. You have your agenda. Of course, our agenda is overloaded, okay? We already know that we always over plan in class, right? We may not get to everything, okay? But even if we don't get to, get to everything, at least we will all have an understanding of how to use the Inspire with the activities uh, that we um, go over today, and we will have an understanding of how to implement those activities in class. Next, in your folders, you have a packet of paperwork. Okay, all of these are your activities that you're going to participate in today. Okay, so if you would just dip in your packet, the first page, okay, first page is the cover sheet, but after the first page, you have your task sheet. Okay, and as mentioned before, we're going to engage as learners first, okay, and as teachers. Okay, so this is your task sheet. On your task sheet, it has uh, three parts to it. The first part is presenting your lab data. You're going to uh, participate in, in experiments and activities. Okay, you're going to present your lab data. So you're going to engage as a student first part. Second part, you're going to engage as a teacher. Okay, and then the last part also as a teacher. But all of your information, you're going to record in your lab notebook. Okay, so if you look in the center of your table, you should have one of these. The only thing you have to do is just fold it. Okay, put your name on the back of it. It has uh, area for your name and all of your information, all of your data, everything on this tag sheet, you're going to record in your lab notebook today. Okay? And then once you record that information in your lab notebook, we're going to give you an opportunity to share with your neighbors and then we're going to give you an opportunity to discuss everything. Uh, and if you have any questions, concerns, uh, misconceptions, Mr. Young is here to answer those questions for you. Okay? Um, also, you have, you have a lot of stuff. Okay, you have CPGs that you can refer to, so everyone should have a CPG in the middle of their table. Okay, so you have a CPG that you can refer to. Now, um, the CPG should have already gone up, so everyone should have had a chance to review these already. So if you have any questions or whatever about the CPG, just see me, you know, afterwards, and we'll talk about that. You know, we always have CPG issues. Okay, and lastly, Okay, we have this little cutesy piece of paper here. This appointment clock buddy. Okay, so you just want to make sure everyone has what they need in order to engage in this session on time. Okay, and as long as everyone has what they need, we are ready to begin. Okay, Mr. Young. Okay, well, welcome. Um, my name is David A. Young. I teach at Fayetteville High School in Fayetteville, Arkansas. And uh, I'm a physics teacher as well as a math teacher and a computer programmer. Um, we want to spend some time today with you trying to bring several things together. Uh, one is content. Uh, we need to think about the content that uh, we're working with and how it relates to the uh, state standards. We also um, want to help you become more familiar with the Inspire technology, which includes the handheld that you have and then the data collection power. Uh, also, it has uh, an interface with the computer so that I can take files from the internet to my computer to your handheld. You can do stuff on your handheld, uh, like instead of writing in your logbook, you can write on the calculator. 
and then you can transfer those files from your calculator to the computer, and then once I have the computer, I can do stuff like grade them, redistribute, uh, I can open them up, show them to the class, I can grade them uh, and just record them and burn them or whatever. So um, this idea of changing your point of view as you go through the day needs to be uh, uh, probably um, uh, prefaced with the fact that one of the goals, or maybe the goal, is to have you engaging children with this technology and this content. Let's talk about uh, Pendulum for a second. And um, this is about waves, right? So uh, what are the seven things you think your kids would know about um, waves? Period would be time. Okay. A period is some measure that's uh, associated with uh, waves. And it, it is a time, or is it? And then, so, so and it's then, like okay. and then gravity, all right. 9.8, okay. if you're on Earth, where you're at, what's your physical location. Okay. I'm not sure kids would come up with the gravity part. Uh, although if they've seen the full crop pendulum that does the uh, changes of the position of the Earth, you can go, you know, we have some of those, some schools that have that in their lobby, and it goes through the, the day as the Earth turns. Um, but period, uh, now some of my kids get confused with units and what you're measuring. So he said period, which is measured in seconds. Okay. By the time and, to complete one full um, trip. And so period has some connotations because if you see a wave and say, well, how fast is that wave? Is that, is that, is that what you're talking about, period? How fast the wave is? Yeah, just the, uh, how long it takes to complete one revolution. Uh, no? Yeah, how long it takes to complete one revolution. Okay. So revolution in terms of a pendulum would be from here to here? Yes, one. It has to back back. Back. It's one, it's up, and then back up, mm -hmm. back up right? Okay. So from here to there, that's a. No. That is equilibrium. One complete one. So wherever you start. So it's doing like this. Now, right there. Okay. okay, so he's saying like from here to there? No, that's half. To there. Yeah, that's full cycle. Okay, so from peak to trough to peak. To trough, to peak. Yeah, that's okay. one cycle. Right. And, that, and that's what the period is, but the, the speed of this doesn't have anything to do with the period, does it? It does. That is how fast I... Yeah. yeah. Uh, no. Okay, so the speed of the wave Depends is on like 300 meters per second. Depends on the medium. Depends on a lot of things. The speed and time are different things. Mm -hmm. So the period is how long it takes to go through one oscillation. The speed of the wave is affected by that. Uh, so your earthquakes, there's two kinds of waves, right? Okay. So, and then there are two kinds of waves. So if you ask kids to draw a wave, what will they draw? Okay. Probably because of the, what the math folks did to it, uh, they would do that. Okay. But there's another wave that's drawn differently. Transverse and longitudinal, are you talking about? The sound wave. Uh -huh. How do you draw it? <laughs> so, is it like this? Or is it like, like that? I draw it with the second one. The, like with Okay, so peak, trough, peak, trough, peak. Okay, so that's another thing about waves is that being a, at a peak or a trough, and that's called... Well, physics people might say that this wave and this wave differ by the amplitude, but the amplitude is really associated with energy. So if I put more energy in the wave, okay. All right. so then uh, so we got amplitudes, we got peaks and troughs which are connected, we've got period. What about frequency? So what is it? Uh, period is equal to 1 over frequency, is that? Yeah. Okay. And this is very complicated. My kids don't quite understand that. Uh, there's a synergy between the two, 
and it's sort of like, yeah, uh, how long it takes to do one thing or how often one thing occurs. Uh, so, uh, but these would be all things that your kids would bring to class. Uh, they already know this before we do this. No. Okay. So, I think the assumption in this activity is that you would already know that. That you would already know um, period and frequency and all this stuff about waves. The difference between a, a sound wave and a, uh, was it longitudinal and transverse are the two that you're talking about? Okay, uh, but in reality, not so much, right? <laughs> okay, so if I wanted to build a pendulum and see what the effect of, d of changing the pendulum around had on its period, then um, I'd have to know how to build one, and I just built one for you, right? Okay, and so... I chose this as opposed to, say, that bottle of water. So what's the difference between this and that bottle of water? So I could, I could change masses. That is, does the period of a, a pendulum change if I change the mass? No. It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't. But, but, I mean, come on, my kids don't even know what period and amplitude means. So you're telling me that they know that, they know that the mass won't make, I mean, you said G, right? And G's all over mass, right? And so... I'm thinking the kids might think, I mean, just do it. They would think that the larger mass is faster or something like that. They would have some misconception. They will understand. They will have a misconception. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I mean, like send this around and have them swing it, and send that around and have them swing it, and they say something's different. Okay. So I don't know, but you say no. Okay. Everybody says no. So we'll see. Um, the other thing I could do is change the length of the arm of the pendulum. That is, you think this is different than this? Okay, so maybe that changes something. Okay. And then, uh, what's another thing you could change? Yeah, you could change the gravity. You could change that. Or, look at that other planet. You can change the gravity. Inside the room, yeah. that have to be done. Field trip, field trip, yeah. yeah. Okay. I go to Alaska, I understand they don't have full gravity up there. Um, so, so uh, but the angle in which I swing it, yeah. as opposed to, okay. so this is sort of set that somehow your kids come to think that these are the three things you want to test. Uh, ironically, the last thing you test is the length of the pendulum. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the motion detector to collect the period of a pendulum, okay? And then we're going to vary those things according to the guidelines uh, on this document. And I think I can get that document to here in a minute. So uh, while you're building your pendulum, we can do that. But everybody knows how to use the motion detector? Okay, so here's the motion detector. They're in that yellow box back there. You're going to do this activity as a student. Then you're going to kick back and reflect a little bit about, um, and maybe while you're doing it, be thinking like, I don't have these. Okay. Um, but your math folks do. And matter of fact, when I ask the kids, do you know how to do this? They say, yeah, we do, we do this in math all the time. Okay. A little Ziploc that has two kinds of cables. The one cable that you're interested in is the USB which hopefully is in there. And this is the, the, the end that goes into the motion detector, which means the old motion detectors don't work. They have to be the CBR2. And so they have a USB, looks a lot like a printer cable. And then the mini goes into the top of your calculator. Okay, so that's, that'll hook those up. Now I wanna show you this but uh, there's a panel back there in that box that if I had one of those little light boxes, remember those little light boxes they used to have where you could put something on top of it and light would pass through it and go through a lens and project onto your smart board? So if I had one of those, I could do that, but the problem is is that when I hook into that, I use this orifice. 
So I couldn't actually show you on my calculator how this works unless I had an Elmo. Okay? Or I could actually videotape it and send it to YouTube and have you all go download it on your phones while you're... Okay. So anyway, I want to plug this into the computer. And so uh, this is too small. So I need to make it bigger. Well, one way to, do, to make it bigger is to jack the printer cable, although that's Ethernet, is to jack the printer cable from, the, from there. And then it's got the printer cable part. And you know what the, on the other side of the printer cable is? The, the full USB. So if I had a printer cable, I could just show you how to use this with the computer. But that doesn't always work, so what you need is one of these little mini USB adapters, and there's a link on the website. On, they're like five bucks from Veneer. And what they do is they collapse the mini USB to a full, or blow it up. Okay. So with that, I can do this on my computer, unless my computer's been mad at me. And so I can plug in And now I'm just a full USB. Now, in the document that you're going to get someday, <laughs> uh, it's set up to ask you to collect the data. So let me go ahead and open it for you. OK, so um, if I follow through the instructions here, it um, has a little animation of uh, a pendulum. And um, what you need to do is to make sure that you put your pendulum in such a way that it's picked up by the, the um, high-frequency sound wave that comes out of here. And then um, I'm just showing you how it works. Uh, if you hit your motion detector, you've got problems. If you get closer than 15 centimeters, you've got problems as well. That is, this has a, a rate of return a limit in terms of the processor speed. So if you get too close, the time that the signal goes back and forth is too short, and therefore it won't pick up. It will give you garbage. And then basically they say, okay, let's see your data. Okay, So somewhere, I guess I need to plug this in. So I'll unplug this thing that's not working and plug in the... Uh, Okay, what's happening is that there are some drivers for this that are installed when you install the software. It's called the GoLink, and the GoLink is the veneer software uh, that's built into the TI software. So you don't really have to do anything. But notice what happened when I plugged this in. That seventh app came up, and it's the uh, point of focus, and right now I'm holding it so it bounces off the ceiling. And it says the ceiling's about 1.7 meters away. Okay. All right, so there are menu options to do this, but basically I want to swing the pendulum back and forth in front of this. Okay. And the way I do that is I just press enter and go back and forth with the pendulum and then press enter when I'm done, and it gives me the graph. Okay, so in the first model I'm doing different masses or different angles or different lengths, whatever it is. And so for that particular pendulum, uh, I didn't get very good data, right? But could I tell the period from this? Okay, so I would just have to know what the time is right there and what the time is right there or is the time up here? Okay, so remember you were telling me that that's not good enough. you got to come back. So trough to trough, uh, peak to peak or whatever. So if I knew how long it took then I would know the period. Then I would just do it again with a different mass or length or angle. Okay. So that's basically what we want you to do. So what I need you to do while I'm trying to fix this file problem is to build a pendulum and get a motion detector with the cables. And then I'll get you the, the program here in a minute. Uh, the masses are back there. The stands are over here by the pink bag. And uh, in the yellow thing are the motion detectors. One per group's sufficient.
Okay, in a moment you're going to be doing uh, different masses, and so you need to think about what three masses you want. They're suggesting um, <coughs> 0.05, 0.1, and 0.15. What would those be? What kind of units you think? Kilograms. So uh, 50 grams, uh, 100 grams, and 150 grams. Does that seem reasonable? They got more people. Yeah. So you can plug. And uh, you want to open up that file. Yeah, yeah. you're good. Which file? What time is the file? It's the um, one a uh, uh, Phys Act one two 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 seven, and it's in the DISD two thousand eleven folder. The way that I'm doing it now is. Uh, um, I'm, you're not logging in, but uh, once you plug in, it should start coming to you. Hey, if you want to come up and get the files for today, I'll show you uh, some other things about how this works, but the model I'm doing right now is just sending it to you without knowing who you are. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's up here in the corner, Phys Act 12227. All of these are not named the same way, so if you look at the documents, it tells you the name of the file. Sometimes it's the name of the number. Yeah. Yeah. So on the first page of the website, I've listed the ones in order that we're trying to do, and then that number is kind of key for searching. Somebody pointed out that you want to control the other two variables, or three. You want to stay on Earth. You want to keep the length of the pendulum arm the same, and you want to do what? Displace it the same amount, the same angle. If you haven't done the angle yet, I would suggest that you skip over to the length of the arm. Now, on the length of the arm, there's a bit of a tell, and they want you to do 17 lengths. But on the other three, the other two, they said just do three masses and three angles. So why not just do three? Thanks. What we wanted to do, uh, uh, lots of good discussion, lots of good sharing, and we may not get it all done before lunch, but... Uh, we wanted you to write to these three prompts in your lab notebook. Now, there is a place in the document that I sent you that you could write as well, but we're not going to do that with this lesson, but if you keep going on the pages in your uh, uh, Inspire document, you'll get to a page that has these questions, or at least the first three. So take a minute and... Uh, um, Write down what will students need to know before you introduce this activity. We talked a little bit about that uh, as I was talking about waves, but we didn't talk about, like, how do you see the graph and how do you trace and how do you read the instructions and how do you know that this was written for the older software, right? Uh, the B part, um, what advancing questions would you need to ask students as they engage in the lab activity, that is, the little stop points, stop and let me tell you this, or, or whatever. And then, uh, what will you do to ensure that students understand the link between the lab activity and the major concepts? Major concepts, I guess, are the teaks, right? Um, the set was, what can you do to change the period of a pendulum? Okay, did we get that? We're just focused on trying to get the data. <clears throat> now, when I did my graduate research, 90% of the time was trying to make it go. And only 10% of the time was actually getting the data. This constructing scientific explanations, your CER, you have that. And um, use the CER template to formulate a scientific explanation for the lab activity. The other uh, question that came up was about content. Now, we didn't get into the formula uh, for the relationship between the length of the pendulum and the um, period, but it's in your book, and, uh, in your handout, and they go into uh, when you do the regression to see the, the pattern and the data that actually changed, you get a uh, power regression, and the, uh, the, the power is 0.5. 
and so it's some k times t to the uh, one half power, which is the square root. Oh, it's not t, but it's l um, to the one half power, which means it's the square root of the length. And and if you actually did anybody get that data, you actually get pretty close. You get um, you know x to the 0 0.045 0 0.055. My kids have a hard time seeing that 0 0.049 is the square root, okay? And the math people don't help at all because they say, no, it's not because <laughs> it's got to be a half. It couldn't even be 0.5, okay? Uh, so anyway, uh, so, so the other question that's not up here that you might want to address in your uh, book would be some personal reflection about content um, gaps. That is stuff you need to know more about pendulums. When we were talking about amplitude and period and how you draw them and uh, earthquakes and sound waves and pendulums and transverse and longitudinal, you know, do you, you own all that stuff? Do you need to know more about it? Would you want to prepare yourself personally uh, in terms of content? Now that part we don't want to share when we go to our buddies, but I'm going to give you about five minutes to write to these things, five more minutes, and then we're going to buddy up at one of the times. Okay, part of what uh, they wanted me to model for you is uh, this use of the lab notebook. And so there's lots of things that <clears throat> I personally would have done differently in this lab to collect information from the kids, to keep them on task a little bit, and to you know, essentially model what I would really like them to do in a lab is to tell me what's going on. So for example, I would have them take a photograph of their pendulum and include that in their lab report. Right now, you can't put JPEGs in the Inspire, uh, but eventually they would be able to embed that as a page, I'm sure, uh, so that they could report that or draw it. Okay. Uh, how much time would you give them between the moment that would say take the data and the moment that would say give your report? Um, <coughs> well, generally, uh, I'll use one or two class periods for the data collection, and then they're on their own to finish up and and give it to me by some deadline uh, yeah, in, in, in the week. Uh, in this case, probably just a couple of days. Uh, there's not, not much to So they all write formal lab reports at the end. They just don't fill up. Yeah, and, <laughs> and it's usually all in their Inspire document. They, they write everything in there. Uh, yeah, I just bring it in through the, yeah. And I can collect it with Connect to Class. I, I have an issue on this laptop, which I don't think I'll be able to address, but I will show you how I'll collect your responses through the Inspire documents this they afternoon. Keep them inspired. Well, them yeah, what they do is they, um, th it is class set. They turn them uh, no, um, some of them have their own, okay. but that's not, that's not usual. Mm -hmm. uh, they send me the files and they're tagged with their name. Mm -hmm. And then when they come back to class, I send it back to them and they add to it. Mm -hmm. And then they can work on it at home right now. <coughs> when kids buy the handheld, they get the software for free. So they, if they bought their own handheld, they would have the software at home to work on, uh, but you know, they'd also have the handheld too. Uh, so anyway, um, so one of the things was to, you know, do you do lab notebooks? Are they like this? Are they different? I noticed probably about half of you are not writing in the notebook, okay? Um, writing in the notebook or on the Inspire allows me to have a, um, an easy way to analyze what they wrote. Are all lab notebooks for their own use and you don't ever grade them or do you and what's your rubric and things like that. And then uh, the um, appointment buddy thing was a way to get this information shared. So if you look at these questions, um, question one is what will students need to know before you introduce this activity. I imagine you focused on Inspire technology stuff more than physics content, I just imagine. Number two, advancing questions. I think that has some rich fodder because I've had a couple conversations as I went around the room of things that um, would have been things to share with the group either during the event or after or maybe even before. And then the third one here, um, what we do ensure and students understand the link between the lab, lab activity and the major concepts. I find that um, is an ongoing process in my room. We keep going back to, remember when we did the pendulum? Remember that graph you got when you saw it moving back and forth? Well, that's the same as this. And so, you know, coming back to those things are where 
my kids tie it together. So in uh, um, the interest of time, I would like to focus just on the B question. And if you want to do the other with your buddies, that's fine. But if you would take a moment and get with your noon buddy and share what you've written on the B question. And if you want to, the other questions, but let's focus on B, and then I want to report out a little bit. So take some notes of things that the whole class needs to know. Okay, so. But how would your length mass and your angle measure, uh, affect your period? Oh, okay, so. Um, you chose your letters. His, uh, his, they, yeah. Did y'all both agree on that, or was that just? Uh, no, we both, we, call it, we uh, combined our brains, and we yeah. came up with that. So okay. Yeah. So um, he's sort of going back to uh, this question about um, if I change the mass, if I change the length of the string, and if I change the initial angle, uh, and also change gravity, which, you know, the, there are these microgravity experiments you can do, okay, uh, go to the vomit comet. I mean, if you're in the vomit comet and you were doing this, what would be happening? Um, I think I might uh, suggest how does that change the graph? Because we drew that sine curve. And, um, but you were talking about how does it change the period? Well, yeah, that, that's one example. Mm -hmm. One thing would, could be a possible leading question that we could devise. Okay. So trying to focus in on uh, um, the main idea. And how does that how does that change? Um, one group was uh, I think we came up with the suggestion that maybe there'd be another column in that spreadsheet with their prediction of the periods. Maybe that was uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, that um, you know if I did double the mass, what would well you know I, I don't know that the kids could even come up with a period for a 50 uh, gram mass swinging back and forth. What would you say it would be? Would I have to do it for them? Well, I mean, they can calculate it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if, if I just if I if I ask kids how many uh, dines um, of seven fifty seven weighed, what do you think? They'd be order of magnitude. A seven fifty seven. Seven fifty seven. Yeah. How many what? How many? How many dines? So I don't, I don't yeah. think they would even be able to come up with Some a number. Some sort of exponent. Some random. You think it'd be big? A lot. Huge. Well, what if they thought a dine was really big? I think a dine is a dine. It's like a, 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 um, a furlong's a furlong and a fortnight's a fortnight. And so I, it is what it is. I'm just thinking that. I would think you'd need a lot. Well, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm just saying that if I asked the kids what the period of a pendulum was with uh, 50 grams hanging from it, do you think they would be like, Five. I, I mean, that's what yeah, I think. They wouldn't know. Yeah. Right. So for them to do that prediction, yeah, for them to do that prediction, it might be more effective for them to get the first one. So they do the first one, and they get a number like, "What was the period for your 50 gram?" Uh, you got to plug in to log in. Okay, 2.3 seconds, is that what you got for 50 grams? He did qualify it. Well, he said uh, a certain length of string. So, so it's just like the question on the 777. Is it full? Is it empty? Does it have gas in it? Okay, so all the kids might say that, so I have to do the... Ask the better question. More guiding questions? <laughs> it depends. Uh, so yeah, guiding Where questions while they're doing the experiment. Um, different what why they may do why may what what purpose that they're doing the experiment for? Uh, what are they gonna learn by it? So some things that you can you can share with them while they're doing that. Yes. Okay, uh, what changes are you observing with the um, oscillations when you change the mass? Like what trends do you see? Okay. And this is kind of significant because we had talked to a couple, of, I talked with a couple of people and they were saying that you, you basically you're, you're missing the whole deal because you're just focused on the period. 
And what happens is that as you go from one data set to the next, it zooms automatically if it's working right. And so you have no point of reference. That is, you know, which graph is, is bigger? Which of these has the biggest magnitude, m biggest amplitude? Which one has the biggest amplitude? You can't tell because I don't know what your window is. And so, so the fact is that if you do one and discard it and do one and discard it and do one and discard it, which is sort of the way this was written, you might miss that point of, you know, what other things you're seeing. So, you know, it's a little bit different. Um, most of my labs are inquiry-based and focus on experimental design. So, as opposed to saying, we want to see how the effect of length, um, uh, what the effect of length is on the period of a pendulum, which is basically what this lab's saying, uh, even though it feigns, let's play different angles and let's play different masses. If you read it very carefully, you're, or, you know, my kids go to page seven and say, oh, okay, this is really what you want me to do, right? So uh, if you were playing it out, uh, you, you might play this lab out differently. And just to underscore what I said earlier, the expectation is that you get training, you get equipment, you get some content uh, brush up, and then you do stuff with kids. And so, you know, what of this would actually appear in your classroom, if ever, okay? And if it wouldn't, then why not? You know, what, what's the problem? Uh, um, you know, I was going to every table with people in line to try to get them to figure out where they were on their calculator. I don't have that problem with the kids. Okay. I mean, I don't. I mean, it's, 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 I mean, you know, they can program a VCR uh, or, or what is it, TiVo now. Uh, I mean, you know, they don't have a problem in going around on the calculator. They have a problem in figuring out, like, what's going on here? What are we doing? Y'all know what, you, what you're doing. Yeah, so it's a, it's a complete opposite. So you get sort of a, um, a false feeling that this would never work with your kids because, you know, I don't know what, what button to push. Well, you don't have to know what button to push. They have to know, okay? And so that's a, that's a problem. The other thing that, um, that, that came up, which typically comes up, is this level of frustration. And the story I tell is that um, I don't do stuff with kids that I don't know how to do. Okay. So if I'm trying to teach kids about something I don't know, I just don't teach it. You know, I'd like the AP test. You could just leave out something, and they could still per get a five on the test because the test is over everything. You can't leave out everything because then you got a little bit of a problem. But um, and it's the same pr way probably with your high, high stakes assessment. That is, you could actually not teach something, but teach all the other stuff just stone cold and then they'd do well. They, they wouldn't know that thing. And if you did it year after year after year, I guess they'd know that you're not teaching that because <laughs> every, every year your kids wouldn't know it. But uh, the problem is, is that you generally don't go into the classroom not knowing what you're doing. And that happens every day. But on the other side, kids who come into your classroom pretty much don't know what you're doing. They don't know what you plan to do. They don't know what you're doing when you're doing it. And after you did it to them, they don't know what happened to them. And the way it, they live their life is they leave your classroom and they go down to Miss Smith. And you know what Miss Smith does? She does stuff to them that they don't know what it is and they don't, they've never seen it before and they don't know how to do it. And, and day after day after day after day. And we don't do that, so we don't deal with that kind of frustration very well. Okay? We generally like to be in control and we like to make things go. And we don't like being frustrated. So you're going to have to get a little frustrated to own this stuff. But the other side of that coin is that if you came in November, if you're coming today, if you come in February, then you'll be maybe halfway there. Okay. And, you know, they want you to do stuff with kids in class. They got an opportunity to get you equipment. You're getting training. Where does it go from there? Uh, you know, I've been in plenty of trainings, and it's in a folder in a file, and that's as far as it ever got. Okay. Lots of it. But... Some things actually do appear in my classroom 
and that's our goal. What, what will appear there? Okay, the lab books, uh, did, did your buddy, your apartment, uh, appointment buddy have their notebook filled out correctly? Did you look over their shoulder and make sure and they spelled everything correctly? They didn't use another sheet of paper? They didn't use post-it notes? One of the things that you might want to consider is that if you look around, uh, if we do the appointments again and what you saw, you know, if you ask kids to turn these in, are they in a format that would be useful to you? Because, you know, I, I don't have enough time to wade through a whole bunch of stuff that I can't figure out and, you know, it takes me a lot of time to, to, to do. Uh, you need to sort of think about the need for them to write to some prompts as a reflection for what they did. And you had two needs. You had a need as a student when you were doing the lab and then as a teacher when you were doing these lab notes. So um, think about that and then think about how you might bring that into your classroom. And what I'm hearing from the people that drive the truck is they want you to do the lab notebooks. All right, so these people that were green got logged in and they uh, got the file I sent. Two people did the other part, which was to send me the file that they've been working on this morning. So sometime today, you want to come back up. You won't have to log in again unless I stop the class and you want to send me that file. Okay. How do you send a file? Go to House, My Documents. When you go into My Documents, you probably are on the file that you want to send, but if not, you have to get on it, move up or down, and then Menu and Send. But you will have to be physically hooked in. Any other thoughts about the reflection? Anybody feeling good or bad or? Mm -hmm. I have a quick question. Uh -huh. you, we, everything is How are these yes. PDF files written? Um, because we get them from you, but what if we want to write our own? Okay, this question is how, how are they written? And basically they're done uh, on the teacher edition software. And you just add a new document and you start out with maybe a web a word processor and you'd say this is lab 17 and then you insert uh, something like I don't know a graph and then you either leave it blank or put a graph in there or whatever. The ones, uh, there was one part of this that's a little bit more complicated so if you'll open up that file that we were looking at you notice how on the bottom here I have several files open uh, these are a couple of the files that were sent to me and one of the things about the teacher software is I can have several files open at a time with your handheld you can only have one open at a time so you have to save and close one and open the other but on the teacher software so this is uh, if you um, just a couple of things that I noted um, control up if I can hit it right will show you all your pages. But control works like, um, uh, like this. You press control and then let go of it. And then the next thing you get will be the blue stuff, like control on will be off. Control um, delete will be clear. But you don't hold it down, okay? Just press it and it's activated. Press it twice, it's not activated. Okay. Uh, and if you go to problem four, you'll see these questions that, were, uh, that I put into your document. So if you download this from the, the TI website, it won't have this last piece in there, which are the problems. And so one thing that you could have done would be Right. So you could, you could have the kids type in the answers to things on another page or create one from scratch, but having the prompt. You can copy and paste these from your, you know, the internet or from a, a test bank or, you know, whatever. Now I mentioned that um, when I insert, I have some more options than you do. Your, your insert is doc, insert, 
And uh, what I have is um, problems and pages, which are cool. Um, if I want a particular page, I would choose one of these apps. Notice that there is no data collection app here. That's the other thing I just noted. How do you launch the data collection app? Control D, or you can plug and unplug. But what happens sometimes is you accidentally exit out or it goes away for some reason. You still need it, so that's the way you relaunch it. And a word processor, but I also have a question page. So I can produce questions that are in uh, your document, like which is more important for a wave, the amplitude or the period? No, it's just got to be a yes or no, true or false. Period, right? <laughs> so, so, uh, so then that's going to be a set for a discussion or a lab or whatever, you know, design me an experiment that tells me or show me a lifetime use of a wave that, you know, I mean, what about an earthquake? Which is more important, the amplitude or the period? because all earthquakes are dampened out pretty fast, right? And so most earthquakes only last moments, although it sounds like a long time. But you got a big amplitude, you know, doesn't matter. I mean, you get shot with a bullet, doesn't matter how long it takes, just, you know, once is enough. Okay, so, but I can create questions in the teacher edition software. Now, the thing that you were talking, the other thing that I was mentioning was this one page that y'all need to go to and it's uh, this one with the pendulum. And this points out a couple of things of interest. One is how do you actually do this? That's pretty cool. Um, how do you uh, uh, actually do this animation? Okay. And then the other thing is <clears throat> how do you get from one app to the other? And one way to do it is just to move your mouse. Whoops. <laughs> Uh, there is a uh, control Z. That undoes stuff. Okay. And so you can undo stuff if you screw it up, supposedly. Okay, so. Um, Wait, so how, yeah, and how do you change the parameters in, in, that, in this one? Yeah, see, so that, that's the problem is that. You get this from somebody who built it. You don't know how they built it. You don't know how to change things, and that's the more complicated part. But certain, uh, certain of them will have um, an opportunity for you to change some of the parameters with like a slider, which we'll show you in a minute. Others are built, and all this is hidden, and you're not supposed to change anything. If you try to change it, it gets upset. Okay. But it would be obvious that you'd want to be able to change this by changing the angle or changing the mass or changing the length of the string and seeing that, but that's not the way this was built. Okay, so one thing is how do you get from side to side? One is with your mouse, is just to move over and tap. The other is do, and this is undocumented on this keyboard, is control tab. Okay. Now what I'm saying about it's undocumented on this keyboard, control tab doesn't seem to say anything. Whereas control um, scratch pad says something, right? Okay. On the other keypad, this keypad, Control tab has this little icon that shows your switch in sides. It's from the TI-89, TI Voyager stuff. But they took that out on this new one, so. Okay. Any, any way with some things are written out in a format. Okay, you want to do this, press this. Way. Want to do this, press this. Way. Kind of short, maybe one, two pages. They're, they're on the web page that I built for you. If you go down, there's uh, a couple of links, overview and shortcuts. So it's down towards the bottom of the web page I bet. He was asking like, is there any place this is all written down? And yeah, it is in your manual actually, but uh, uh, there's a, a, a document, a PDF and a PowerPoint on the web page I built for you that shows you that stuff. Okay. All right, now switching from side to side is important because I don't know if you can tell, but my focus is on the right side. Okay. Now my focus is on the left side. Can you tell? Well, this thing's big, right? 
Yeah. It's, it's a little hard to tell sometimes, though. So I'm not sure what this is. You think this is a calculator? You think this is a graph? You think this is geometry? You think this is a word processor? You think it's a spreadsheet? You don't know? Well, it doesn't look like a spreadsheet. It looks like a Word document. Well, I'm not sure, but if I press menu, I'll see options that will probably tell me that I'm in a word processor. Things like changing the font or whatever. So, uh, and uh, somebody in here owns this button. Matter of fact, if you look at their calculator, uh, it's probably like worn out. But escape is always good for if you screw up. Uh, press escape and then it'll undo. Okay. So I'm back on this side, and if I hit menu, I get different options. And although you may not know what the, you know, whether this is a calculator or word processor or whatever, but you know it's different. Okay. And this is a geometry thing where you can trace and change the window and do stuff. So if you're ever confused, hit menu and it'll sort of give you a hint as to where you are. Now with the data collection, you get this little bar at the bottom. And when you're on it, it's pretty clear. And when you're not on it, it's not real clear that you're not on it, if that makes any sense. Okay, and then did you, were you able to make the pendulum go? I don't have the time button yet, but yeah. You don't have what? Oh, yeah. Um, th this is a little hinky because this was written for the older operating system. Oh, okay. And if you notice, mine wasn't there a minute ago, but now it's there. So one way that you might be able to get it is to hold down and get the little fist and move things around. Okay, so... Um, I, I actually had that problem with this document. It, uh, this wasn't showing up until I changed something and then it did. But uh, the way it works is that you press on this and then it starts the animation. And then if you press on that, it'll pause it. And if you press on this one, it will reset it. There's a, uh, there's a NASA site called NASA Free Software and they have a lot of these uh, applets on it. So you can download for free. That's actually what this is. It's just like a little Java applet built into the Inspire. So you'll find a lot of these that are useful and some not so much. And going back to you, not just to disrespect your issue here, this was written before the new operating system. They are revising it and we'll, it'll work on the new operating system. And one of the things that we discovered when we were looking at uh, the lessons, which... which one it is, that this was written for the old software because this is the data collection app for the old software. So having this in my face doesn't really hurt my kids because they don't read instructions. <laughs> but uh, that's a little bit of a problem, in particular when the text talks about how to make this go away. Somebody actually read that. And there's a way to make this minimized so it's not in your face. That's not a problem with the new operating system. So one of the problems is this stuff uh, was written for the older operating system, and therefore it's not 100% compatible. But it, it will be in, in the future. You will have a chance to look at other things like that, and you can get to see more sophisticated. So to, to write uh, documents that have this kind of stuff in it, is more complicated than just a building one as a frame. 90% of the time with my kids, it's a blank document. We're starting from scratch. You write down stuff you think's important. But I found in Texas a lot, they like to throw in the text and they like to highlight parts of the text with either bold or underline because these are words that are on the, the high stakes assessment. Is there a function on the Inspire where you can go and look at all the applets that are available that you know of? Uh, all the applets are in the world, and uh, most of them are on the TI website. And um, I'll go ahead and show you that since it came up. Um, there is a link here to the Inspired Physics. And this is where um, there's a bunch of physics stuff. And uh, it has 
not very searchable um, aspects to it. But basically, there are things that are bell ringers. You start at the first of class, and you either do it on the teacher overhead or you, you know, have it done by the kids. And it, uh, we'll see one of those, um, and it's sort of getting them to thinking. Then if you go into one of these, as you drill into it, you get more stuff. You had internet here. Um, that sort of tells you what's it about. You can go through the pages of it. And then if you like everything, uh, this is the button you want to hit probably, which is the download of all the files. And then you get all the files. Now, this says it was updated November 22nd, 2010. So you would think that it has been rewritten for the new operating system that came out December 2009. You'd think that. Um, so anyway, that's how that works. But if you wanted to find a particular thing, you would go to download activities, and in activities, you will find ways to search things. And you can search in different ways. You can say, I just want to inspire stuff that uses the motion detector that has to do with kinematics. Okay. Or if, for example, you have a keyword like what was it? One two 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 seven. Is it five ten below there instead of the number? Well, you could uh, you could put in uh, you know whatever you knew, and it's not the best search. It's not Google, you know. But here's this link to that activity that we just did. So when you want the new version of that, that's the way you'd do it. But obviously, this is not the new version because it's got that little old data collection app. Okay. And it was uploaded in August, but that wasn't good enough to get the change. Okay. So um, you can also get on a, a list if you go back to this Inspired Physics, and they'll send you each week the activities. And you can look over them and say, well, I'm not in that chapter. They try to sync it up with the way that New York does all their activities, but well, since we're not in New York. Yeah. I'm just joking. And the way it was written is that you would get your stuff displayed in what's called a graph as opposed to a, a data and stat. And the reason for that is the graph trace works pretty well and it will just trace along all the data points until you get to that. And that's a nice visual way to consider your maximum or minimum point. I would uh, suggest that looking at the spreadsheet and looking through the list of y values, which are the amplitudes, and looking for the maximum value would be another way to do that. But this didn't even set it up that way. Now, I've asked, I asked a couple of people to send me their, or I, guess, I guess I ask everybody, uh, to send me their file, but I only got two. And so, let me see. We know AAA is not right, but maybe this one is. So I can open up the, the MMM, and even though the data may not be great, you can see up here it says MMM, maybe, maybe not. And uh, so this one has some data in it. And if I look up here, you'll see that, um, well, maybe not. On this page, uh, if I look for variables, I don't see the DCO1 and the DCO2 and the DCO3 that some of you saw. So I have no data to show. But if I did have data to show, I could insert uh, a page that was a spreadsheet. And right here, I could put in DC01 or whatever it was, and it would fill it with those values, and then I could go down that list and look for the Y value that was the biggest, and then get the time off of that, which would be one way that I might do it. This was not even written so that you could see that, or instructions given so that you could bring that up. Okay, So that's one way I might do it, because looking at it visually is cool, 
but getting the actual values is difficult. The other part of that is that if I did uh, insert a um, data and stat, then to get these coordinates, you have to actually uh, press on the button to get it. Okay. Whereas by doing it in graph, you do the graph trace and you can go along and get the stuff. But when, when uh, folks were doing the graph trace, they were using the mouse and swiping it and moving around, whereas uh, it's appropriate for you to use this right, 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 left, 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 left button. Swiping it gets you off of the, the prize.